Yeah. You see people that are usually very jovial, very happy. You just notice that they are very depressed. Like they don't smile, they don't laugh often. They are always into themselves. Yeah. Why? You don't have. So yeah, sorry. Go on and tell us your own experience. This was really bad. I lost my self-esteem. I lost my confidence. I lost everything. I just woke up one morning and I, I was like almost crying because I felt like you didn't even cry. I said this thing with 10k. Like how did I? I just how did everything here. accumulate to do? For loan hubs. They will, sh they will destroy, they will shatter <laughs> this everything that you think you have. Then I deleted that loan apps, all the loan apps, I deleted them once, like the three loan apps. When I paid everything, I deleted the loan apps. God, the peace I felt that day. Ah, I've never felt that peace in the last 10 years. <laughs> when it comes to money, especially in the aspect of loan apps, a lot of people do not talk about their experiences. However, if there's one thing I've seen and I've heard, is the fact that a lot of 20s actually have these experiences and they are very depressing. And so the reason why a lot of people still go through these things is because they don't know what other people have gone through. And so that is why in episode 3 of 20s Uncensored, I've decided to bring someone who has these experiences and has come out of it to discuss with us how he went through it, how the whole process was like, so that if you are trying to do this, you will know that you should not. So with that said, welcome to episode 3 of 20s Uncensored. My name is Ife Olua Oni and I'm your host. And with me today, I have no other person than Emmanuel Oyeshiku. Hey, thank you for that. Yeah, my name is Oyeshiku Akinola Emmanuel. So people call me Emmanuel. Emmanuel is my middle name. So um, I'm a product designer. I develop apps. And I also love business. I'm a business enthusiast. So I'm really, really glad to be here with Fiona and the YouTuber. So thanks for uh, the invite. <laughs> You're welcome. You're I, we had three square meal every day when I was very, very young. That three square meal, I had um, good education. But I can remember a lot of times that I was being sent out of school. So it was not really, really smooth, you know, financially because um, we were not so, so boxed up. And I could see it. You know, when you go to your parents to ask them for money for excursion, I don't even bother to even ask them for money for <laughs> excursion. You know, there are some people that when they tell you, okay, we have this excursion, and then they are all excited, but then whenever they announce stuff like that on the assembly ground, I'm not always excited because I know, know that. that I know the state of things. I wouldn't want to even bother my parents with something like that. So they then end up thinking that they don't have the money to actually provide stuff like that. So we had the normal basic amenities, but then it was not so, so, so good financially for me because yeah i remember that we had to actually at some point we needed to like um borrow money to do some certain things at home even at some point my dad actually called us told us that um they really needed to do some make some certain decisions financially because he needed to like pay for our school fees and a number of things like that so he did so uh, we, i'm actually from a very humble background <laughs> yeah, <so. laughs> but we don't know the humble that i'm talking about right definitely <laughs> We are all products of our environment, right? So, uh, growing up, I thought money was really, really difficult to get. And I thought before you can actually have money, you have to do something extra. You have to do something very, you know, something different from what every other person is doing. Because, uh, you know, there's this, growing up, whenever I asked my parents for money, there was always this uh, typical response that they give me that, uh, let's just be looking at God. God let's provide. be looking at God. God will provide. <laughs> No, and then, time after time, time after time, I actually thought, and then my mindset, uh, I had this mindset that money was actually very, very difficult to get. And then I actually, at some point, I actually knew that uh, my parents were actually uh, borrowing money at some point to actually do some certain things uh, in the house, actually. So that was actually my mindset. All that actually resulted in to me thinking that money is actually difficult to get. Yeah, that's like dating back to like 20, uh, 13, 2014 when I entered uh, the university. So at the point of entering university, uh, we lost uh, uh, my mom and then things became really, really difficult. And then uh, my mom was this person that even if she didn't have like a lot of money, she would still try to just meet her friends and then get things together to, you know, uh, give you so when you're going to school. So I just gained admission at that point and then um, when I was entering school, I only went to school with just few things. I didn't go with any food stuff, you know, 
And I remember when my uh, uh, elder brother was actually going to school, he went with a lot of things, but it was not like that for me. Uh, I'm the lucky child. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, it was really tough because I, when I entered school, yeah, I didn't have to stop. So I really needed to like, you know, um, uh, meet friends, uh, have a lot of friends, and meet with people to help. Uh, beg for you know, just find a way to just create more relationships, and then the relationship obviously is transactional, so that you know, <laughs> <laughs> so maybe at some point you can go to their hostel to eat, you know, yeah. those kind of things. So that was that, but then it got to a particular point that I really needed to do a number of things uh, on campus, and then my dad at that point was not so so financially buoyant to actually support all these things I needed to do. So, uh, especially when I needed uh, a, uh, a phone, remember when I needed a phone, and then I called him, and then he told me that he didn't have the money actually to actually um, give me at that particular point in time. So, I started like looking for ways I could actually get the phone because obviously I need phone to actually function properly, <laughs> you know, to do my school stuff, yes. get documents and all of that. Even so, read materials happening. and what's happening here, yeah, join the class group, yeah. as you know, the updates as regards to class tests and all of that. So. I needed the phone badly. So I remember that I I was cutting with someone then. So uh, this person had a roommate then. So I reached out to the person and then told him that uh, I would actually need some money to, that I needed some money to actually get the phone because I knew that the guy, maybe I see money day in hand. <laughs> so I actually talked to him about it and then he actually borrowed me the money, he borrowed me 10,000. That was the first time I actually borrowed money, 10,000 was the first time like I borrowed a major money and at that point I just thought that okay, it's just normal now, I've seen people do it, I've seen my parents even talk about it at some point, you get so, just thought okay, let me just borrow it and then let me just get the phone, so that was actually my first experience Hmm. borrowing money. Okay, so now I know that, especially with airtime, yeah, the first time you borrow airtime is like, just, I'll just borrow this money. And I'll go. But once you, you get, you now begin to, once you don't have airtime and you don't have access to buy airtime, start dial Airtel or MTM code yeah. to borrow money. And that's how it, it begins, right? So I know that when you borrow money for the first time, you think, oh, okay, I'm just borrowing this once. But then it, it gets, it keeps going over and over. So when would you say he moved? Yeah, it's advanced from borrowing from people around you to now borrowing from loan apps. Okay, so yeah, so at some point when uh, after the borrowing of money from my um, my is it friends Friend. friends roommates, <laughs> yeah, friends roommates. So um, I gave him like a timeline of like about a month, and then yeah, the month came, and a deadline came rather, and then I needed to pay him. So and obviously I didn't have any, so I didn't have any plan. <laughs> and you know, a lot, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of people borrow and then it's not like you have one that goes to somewhere that is telling you that, okay, just go ahead and do whatever you want to do. Don't just have accumulate all the debts and I'm going to sort it out. Okay, so I I needed another loan to actually to pay cover. Back. Yeah, I needed another loan to actually cover the 10k because it was already coming like embarrassing for me because the guy would chat me up, he would talk to my friend about it that how far a man will never pay this money. You get so I was actually looking for a way to cover up. Yeah. So because everybody that I don't know for people that have actually borrowed before you know that when the deadline comes and then you are just looking for how no matter the situation you just want to look for a way to just, to just pay, pay back and then save yeah. yourself that uh save yourself from embarrassment you get. So that was the first time I thought about loan app. Yeah, so that was the first time. I just, I, I think I heard about a particular loan. I'm not going to say the name of the loan. So, <laughs> when they don't come from my head. <laughs> so, um, I heard about a particular loan. And then I was like, ah, okay. And I remember that before that time, I heard about a particular one too. That somebody said you can actually borrow money and run away with it. Wow. You no, know, Nigerians are very, very funny. And you can run away with it. You can borrow the money and then break this thing, run away with it and all of that. So, I've had these ideas from the past about you can borrow money from loan apps and loan apps because it actually, I it was it was shocking to me the first time I heard about loan app. You could actually borrow just by uh, connecting your SIM and then that that was all you get. And then I think your face also. So that was the only thing then. And then I needed to pay the phone oh yeah, to pay for the phone. So I borrowed money from from loan app for the first time. And how much? It felt good because I felt like okay, there was some sort of like okay. Nobody knows me. Nobody can see. They know that and then you feel, there's this feeling that it gives you that okay, this is just between this is just me and, me the, app. and the app. Nobody knows what is 
after you get. So it gives this illusion of okay, I'm safe. Do you understand? So that was actually it for me. So I just borrowed the money, thinking that okay, I think this will actually save me from the embarrassment of meeting people and then seeing me as being beggarly. You get. So that was it. So I borrowed the thank you. So I think the timeline was two weeks. So ago. now I don't have a personal experience of loan apps, but I know like people around me who have experienced the brutality <laughs> of loan apps. <laughs> and we'll get into that shortly again. Yeah? Yeah. But so now it always starts with one loan app. And then yeah. before you close your eyes and you open your eyes. You are dealing with multiple yes, loan apps, yes. borrowing from Paul to pay yes, Peter. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, what happened when it was time to pay back the ten thousand naira? Ah, uh, okay. Very funny story. So, uh, by that time, I've already engrafted myself into no different communities, and then I was a worker in my fellowship in school. Then, so people had already known me that this guy. They saw me as a very stingy guy, not knowing that. <laughs> you don't have to worry. <laughs> not knowing that. See, it's good to have money in this life. <laughs> so, this is it's good to have money. Not knowing that I didn't actually have money. Like, I didn't have money. Do you get So, they already saw me that this guy is always begging for money. Already met a number of guys to just borrow maybe 500 here, 200 here, 1k here. Sometimes just transport. I borrowed the 10k and I knew that, okay, the timeline was actually coming, I uh, know, becoming like and all of that so i knew that okay i needed to borrow another one to pay down because obviously i didn't have as at the time i was borrowing all this money i didn't have any other source to actually pay yes i couldn't go to my parents obviously <laughs> so i couldn't also you know borrow from people because i had already people already knew me for you know, borrowing and then i was just embarrassed from borrowing from people so someone was told me that okay you can actually borrow from multiple loan apps i tried it out and I thought, okay, if this is going to save me from the embarrassment, because I'd already heard that these guys are really, can be really crazy. <laughs> you know, loan up in and of itself is not bad, you get, but then when things go south, it can be really, really brutal, you get, there are methods. <laughs> so I was really, really scared of that. So I actually borrowed from another loan up. And then the interest on that first loan was like about 35, and then I had to pay 13,000. So borrowing 13,000 from that new loan up, um, and hey, now came with his own interest too. So I had to be like 5k on that 10,000. That was about 18k. Okay, so I started with 10k. Now I'm ending up with like 18k. 18,000. Okay, yeah. as new debt. So I borrowed it and then I paid the first one. You get at that time, it didn't dawn on me that I was already running into a streak of <laughs> debt. You know? of that thing is really, really crazy because I thought that, okay, the only thing I was doing was just to cover that embarrassment. First one, yeah. Not knowing that I'm just increasing. The, the amount of money that they are actually pay. owing because I didn't actually get the only value I got from that 13 5 that I borrowed now is the fact that I'm just paying that first loan up. That was everything, and then I will still pay another 18k. So I didn't even think of the next one. I just thought of okay, let me just let me just sort, let me just sort this, this one. one. Get now, let me just sort this first one and be okay. Do you get that? Was it? Do you get this? All right, so now what you just said about like then it begins to increase and you don't even think about it. So I know yeah. someone that when she started with loan halves, it was like very small and it was just, oh, I need data. That was how yeah. I started. And when it was time to like, when it got to the max, it was over 200,000 era when it was time to like, because yeah. she had borrowed from different loan halves to pay yeah. one dollar. And the interest is crazy. Yeah, the interest is very, very crazy. Especially when you don't have a source to actually pay back. Yeah. She gets, so before you know, it was already over 200k. So now, and I know that that can be a, a circle that you can go round and round for. You can, you can be there for a year plus in the circle of borrowing from loan apps. So how would you say you now got out of the streak? Because I'm sure it did not end in the second loan app. Or yeah, did sure, it didn't. <laughs> it most I likely did, did. I did three. Uh -huh. It most likely did not I end did in the second loan app. So how would you say you finally, you were finally able to? break the shackles, shackles of loan half <laughs> so so the thing is before i go into that so because i had to figure out something so the thing is it's a different thing if you are borrowing money to do let's say business yes that there's going to be profit there's going to be returns on it but then most times i notice that people borrow even me too like i borrowed money because i needed to cover a particular expense you get it so and and the issue is that most times we don't have any source. We don't have any uh, thing to fall back on to actually yes. pay off. 
Do you get it? So in and of itself, the fact that I'm borrowing that money to even do a, like pay off an expense is even you, you get in itself, in itself already. already kind of wrong. Do you get? So I figured out that okay, this money that I was actually borrowing, I'm not actually getting anything for it. I'm just borrowing more. To borrowing pay, more to borrow, pay to another pay, one borrow, just to save to myself pay. from embarrassment. Because I remember that there was a particular one that happened that I and the funny thing about loan apps, I'm sorry. <laughs> If there are any loan app staff that is watching <laughs> this, <laughs> but they say, know what they <laughs> should do. Say, but there was this particular one that um, they they were calling me. You know when you want to borrow money, they will call you uh, customers, right? But immediately your uh, deadline is due. They will call you debtor. Do you get the point? Mm. So <laughs> it will change immediately. So there was a person that I even told them that ah, you call me customer. <laughs> so what happened? Customer, I don't turn them oh, my I, I'm like, now. I was like, ah, but when I wanted to borrow the money, you guys are talking to me, you know, very calmly don't. and everything. And the, de- the deadline was just like two days due, you know, like it was like a week or two weeks. You get so I was obviously robbed of my peace of mind at that point. And let me you even ship it in here. Yeah? So apart from even just increasing the interest and all of that, I feel like it, were you ever depressed when you were in that situation? Yes, absolutely. Because it, so, it sometimes you even get to the point where they begin to call your your family members, yes. call your I'll friends. Let me talk about that. They used to call me on behalf of some people, <laughs> and <laughs> or they will send you message on WhatsApp. I'll be like, do you know this person? This person ran away with this so 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 money. They did this to some people that I know personally, <laughs> and I was I was hurt on their behalf. Yeah. Because if if me I can be that hurt, how do you expect that person that is in see, that situation to feel? See, yeah. You see people that are usually very jovial, very happy. You just notice that they are very depressed. Like they don't smile, they don't laugh often. They are always into themselves. Yeah. Why loan helps? So yeah, sorry. Go on and tell us your own experience. So the the thing is, I've actually seen uh, a lot of like experiences when it comes to this. I'm not talking to just just about my okay. own experience alone, the, some of the people that I know too that have actually gone through this are like worse than mine because uh, I try to still find a way to still pay up <laughs> most times. Do you get it? So there was a particular time that I even told um, a distant friend of mine, or an acquaintance, sure, that I actually told him and he said, I should just, you know, let it go. Break the scene. They will not come. They will come <laughs> and then when they find out that they can't reach me. They will just forget it as time goes on. I was like, oh, I'm a Christian. I can't do that. You get <laughs> I said, I can't do that. You get But actually, this thing is a real issue that actually, like, a lot of people in their 20s actually a lot, face. A lot. A lot of people face. Because... I feel like one in every... What am I saying? One in every five? Uh, Maybe one in every three like people. Four in every five. <laughs> <laughs> I'm people crazy. borrow money. Like, people borrow money a lot. You get So, I now figured out at some point that I needed... A stable like source of income to actually we even want to, to borrow ahead to be able to pay this money back so that okay i'm assured of i'm sure of that okay i'm actually going to pay this thing back by this time and they are not going to start calling me because when they start calling you trust me you're going to lose your peace of mind <laughs> you're going to lose your peace that is i can assure you that i'm going to lose your peace i remember Honestly. times that i was I, I was like i joined a particular business and then i'll be in the office and then they will just call me i already know their number they'll just come and i have to run out to just <laughs> to just pick the call and then I will start begging, start begging. It was really, yes, really. It's a lot. It was really, really bad. I lost my self-esteem. I lost my confidence. I lost everything. Oops. I lost everything because, and the truth is, even then, if we, if whenever I had conversation with people, like the only thing I could only think, like the only thing I used to think of then was just how would I pay these people? How would I pay these people? How would I pay back? Do you understand? It was really, really crazy. So, and I knew that okay, I needed to get something. Doing. Doing. I, need, I needed to do something so I can even if I want to borrow money so I can pay these guys back so I can pay them so I started learning I started uh, learning a lot of like stuff to just you know make money and do business and then make some money so even at the time I, I borrowed even when I started learning uh, development and all of that product design and business that I started learning too so I I, I still when I had to actually borrow but then I was kind of still you already I, I in had, a party. I was sure that okay, this business I'm doing, I'm actually going to get money. And there's another twist to that also. You can be, you can feel like okay, there's this thing that okay, I feel like I'm going to pay them. And it's not but sometimes it's, have, it's very good to have a plan B. Yes. You get sometimes my friends are my plan B. I'm serious. <laughs> Some of them are just getting to know for the first time. <laughs> 
sometimes then my parents were plan B because I just be like, okay, even if everything comes scatter, I have this set of people that I know that if I reach out to them, they can just lend me 2k here, 4k here, and then I'll be able to pay. But then that was how I was able to get off. Get out. Because that's actually the challenge for a lot of people. How to get out. How to get out. Because the thing yes. is a cycle. For example, when, when I borrowed this from second loan up and it was like 18k, like six months down that after line. that, yeah, down that line, I had borrowed like up to 100k. Wow. I borrowed up to 100k. I didn't know how I got there. You will not know how. Chicken. I'm serious. I didn't know how I got there. And I just woke up one morning and I, I was like almost crying because I felt like you didn't know how I said this with 10k. Like, how did I? I just how did everything here. accumulate to this? And that's the problem because many of us are borrowing to pay like ex for expenses and all of that, and we don't have like uh, a system to actually pay back. We've not created any system. It's not like we're selling anything. It's not like we're doing any particular job that has assured us of, you know, constant yes, payment or payment salary or something like that. Like that. Yes. Do you understand? So, I started, okay, when I, I started making money from my business, I started paying them. Yes, I started paying them. And I remember the day I deleted, I, I told my friends <laughs> this, you know, very funny story that I have never felt peace I've had in a long time. When I, mm -hmm. the time I deleted that loan apps, all the loan apps, I deleted them once, like the three loan apps. When I paid everything and I deleted the loan apps, God, the peace I felt that day, Ah, I've never felt that piece in the last 10 years. <laughs> to be sincere, like, it was really... It was like know, a lot of really... The peace of God that uh, was being talked about in the Bible. <laughs> I actually felt it. I was so... I was at peace. Like, that moment, and I felt like, God, I'm not going to... I will never, ever, ever... I will never go into this again. To be sincere, it was, it was really crazy. So, thank God that I actually learned that, that okay... If I don't have a stable source of income, I should never I shouldn't do this. actually go ahead to borrow. So if you have a stable source of income, or you have a means, someone, to, a means to actually pay back. Do you understand? If you don't have a means to pay back, you should never go ahead to borrow. Because the truth is, loan up in and of itself is not bad. Do you get it? Loan up is supposed to be to aid people that have but a I means to pay back. Before you even would think about loan apps, like loan apps should not even be one of the first things first. you think about. Except if you, like, you need to borrow like a huge sum of money to start a business or Sorry to do something like that. Sorry, they won't borrow you, you at the okay. beginning. <laughs> but like, I don't think loan apps should even be the first. Start with the people around you. At least yeah. you know that these people, if I borrow something, they won't be charging me interest and there will be nothing like... um calling your family members yeah. saying that you're a thief you're running away with money <laughs> because to be honest i've seen things like you know when you see people that you know that this person is very strong yeah. and then you just see them become weak like you just see this person that you have seen has a very strong pillar just and you're like what really happened because so, so another thing is the truth is i think why some people go to loan apps immediately they run into like very difficult financial situations is because they feel some people feel embarrassed. They feel like I can't reach out to people to actually borrow money because I don't know what they will say about it. Or people, some people are just scared about what people will say. And some people even feel like when they borrow money from their family and friends, that they will go ahead to say stuff about them. But I actually feel sometimes it's just assumptions to me. Actually, it's just assumptions because I wouldn't lie. There were some times that I actually reached out to people to borrow money and people really helped. Get, but I didn't think about that at the beginning that okay, I can actually reach out to people to see if I can actually get the like money to pay back. If you have genuine people around you, sometimes yeah. they might not even have to borrow you. And honestly, almost everybody goes through these issues. Yeah. Even people you think, ah, this person is very boxed up, you'll be surprised to know that they might be boxed up, but there are times when things were bad or things were low to be honest yeah i just feel like many times we think about these things because we've not heard the stories of people yeah or we've not heard other people yes. say things because if he's borrowing money people are borrowing money things are happening so i'll just say like before you i i get that you want to keep your esteem your self-esteem your ego intact <laughs> but loan helps they will they will destroy they will shatter <laughs> the self-esteem that you think you have they will shatter it. You just need to hear people's stories, and you've heard one. So I just feel like before you think about loan apps, like people, think about people around you that you can actually reach out to. So now I, we, really we already said many things, but what are like I want you to like point out some of the lessons you learned in all of this borrowing from loan apps and all of these situations. What are lessons that you learned and you think that would be of benefit to people watching? 
Yes, so I think the first thing is to always surround yourself with uh, a very good community. That's what I would say. Okay. Surround yourself with a very good community. Just like you said, uh, you can actually borrow money from friends. There are a number of business people that have actually listened to, you know, watch their interviews, and then some of them tell you that the money they actually use to start their business, they actually got it from the family. They got around it from them. their family. They got it around them. They borrowed from fellow business people that they already knew, already you get. So I feel like... If you have a very good community, it will really, really help you a lot. Go a long way. Don't borrow money. Before you go ahead to borrow money, ensure you have a means to pay back. So, what now I want to say? For people that used to borrow money and run away, or you borrow money and you not pay, you break the seal. You know what I'm talking about. God is watching. Eighty-four. Yeah, it's a fraud. Now, fraud did they do for one night? <laughs> because I don't know how you borrow money and then you decide to run away with it. It doesn't just make sense to me. Don't let borrowing money from Luna be your first, or don't let borrowing be your first reflex to any financial uh, difficulty you actually find yourself. Yeah. Or at any little thing that probably you need, you just think of loan, 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 loan. It shouldn't okay, be like that. You understand? Because it never ends. If you're not careful, you will start with 2K. There are and some people that well, sometimes you don't want to get into that loop. You have to be very, very careful. You understand? So don't let borrowing, don't let no, uh, like don't have last... your first, um, your first reflex when it comes to like you, you need money for something. Like on the loan they now know. So every small, small thing you are doing on your phone, like you just see loan app ads. I used to have, I used to carry like. Do you know the funny thing? <laughs> the funny thing is that even after I stopped paying, yes. like after I deleted the apps, like after I paid everything and I deleted all the apps, they still called me. They said we noticed that. You, it's been a while you borrowed. I'm not joking. Come on, borrow again. Yes. He said, we noticed that it's been a while. That was after I don't chop money small. So I don't, I don't, I don't stop to the borrow. Look, they called me and they said, we noticed that it's been a while you actually borrowed money. That we know that you're a very good customer. I'm serious. I'm not even joking. They said, I sh I, they told me that I should come and borrow again. And I told them that, okay, I read, just to stop on you. And I said, are you borrowing before today ends? Uh -uh. <laughs> I'm not joking. They, they said, are you going to borrow? When? They said, when? No, let me put it in the way they, they said, when are you borrowing money? When are you going to borrow the next money? I'm not joking. Okay, so this guy... I'm serious. I also I, think if I can chip in, yeah, okay, sure. when you finally, let's say you're watching this and you're already in that loop, you've borrowed and you are getting to the point of being depressed or you're just not yourself. Don't keep it to yourself. Yes, Don't keep it to yourself. Most perfect. times it becomes it becomes worse or it is worse when you are just the only one in it. Tell people, one or two people around. It's not everybody that you tell that will cast your business outside. It, yeah, it shows sure. the, the kind of friends you have, right? So tell somebody, it relieves it a bit. Even if the person cannot necessarily provide the old money that you are going yeah, to use sure, to pay sure. back. Just knowing that, okay, there is one, there are one or two people who care about you that know what you are going through helps. And you you can't even tell. They can be the source that will now help you rally around to actually get the money that you used to pay back. Yeah, because sure. honestly... Because, I, you know, I said community the first time. Yes. Right? So one of the things that really helped me with my sanity <laughs> then was the fact that I, I actually told a lot of people. I didn't keep it to myself. At some point, I even told my pastor because we were a school fellowship and we're not that uh, many so yeah. we, there was this very close cool relationship bond between everybody he gets it. you must always try to um still keep uh, yourself active you know um in whatever community you actually find yourself because what happens is that when some people find themselves in debt they just keep it to themselves and they bottle up everything yes. on their own and people go into depression some people commit, some people commit suicide and it's really really crazy just because of 100k even if it's 500k, I swear, like, it's not worth, <laughs> it's it's not lot, it's, though, but... it's not worth it. Do you get it? So, I actually feel we need to be more um, entrepreneurial. Yeah, it's re it really helps because I feel like even if you have a salary job and you do something, I feel like if you can only do something on the side, actually, let's just be more creative. Let's think, let's think of how we can actually make more money. Do you get Some of more us are just okay with what we have actually know we've been able to get or the money we make and the thing is expenses are like increasing the uh, money uh, like the rate is actually getting high 
the rate now, dollar to naira or naira to dollar exchange rate is really really crazy. Do you understand it? So you need to think in the light of that too. What else can I do? What else can I add to what I'm doing currently to increase the money I actually make, make every it? month? As a student, one of my, one of the best advice I can give you is try to look for something that you can do. What is that other thing? If it's to sell something, if it's to you know just serve somewhere or take up a role just think of any other thing that you can act like just do to make like extra to income make extra income because many so times many of our parents yeah, cannot yeah, yeah. afford the basic things that we need honestly <laughs> they're really trying do you understand so that's actually i think those are my points for so oh, those, those are lessons, are lessons and advice I've tried. i really hope that um if you're in any of the categories let's say you were thinking of starting or you're already in the middle or maybe you're even done with it i just hope that you've been able to at least take one or two things from this video so as much as possible please and please my dear 20s try to stay away <laughs> from borrowing money especially loan apps try as much as possible i know that things can be very difficult trust me but loan apps are not the way except if you are using it for like a business but if you're just borrowing it to quickly yeah. survive here and there, it's not the way, honestly. Yeah. You don't want to tow that path. I did not say this at the beginning, but if you are, you've been watching to this point, you've not subscribed. Why? You should subscribe. Why? <laughs> so please, thank you very much for watching, guys. Kindly subscribe if you're here to for more episodes like this and even other videos that are not part of this series. Give this video a thumbs up because, well, uh, uh, at a dish out value. Give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment in the comment section. Ask questions. I'm sure you'll be there to answer your questions. And just leave observations, comments, and all of that. And share with your friends. Share with yeah. every 20 something year old you know. You never can tell. The person might be in the mix of what, everything that we discussed, and the person has just not shared it with you. So, as much as possible, share with every 20 something you know. Share on every group, every page, everywhere you can share it. Thanks, and God bless you. So thank you very much for watching, guys. And thank you, Emmanuel, for coming on this episode and for sharing or pouring out your heart to all of us. We really yeah, appreciate it's, it. It's my absolute pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for the invite once again. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. And with that, bye. See you in the next episode. Bye. bye.